Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm excited to introduce Alex Antonovich today. We'll be speaking about leveraging Atlas for improved cost management. Um, so yeah, here you go, Alex. Thank you. All right, just a quick sanity check. Can folks hear me? All right, awesome. Sounds great. Hope. All of you have been enjoying the session so far. It's been a pretty packed agenda, very busy day. Um, and I got something special for you today. Uh, top of mind for many of us, which is about cost cutting, right? And uh, cost cutting also for our infrastructure, making sure that our deployment is fully optimized. So uh, my name is Alec. I'm product manager for Atlas Clusters focused on scalability, geo-expansion, and disaster recovery. And we'll cover leveraging Atlas for improved cost management. So let's introduce the characters to our story. Let's meet Bob, the developer, and Alice, his manager. Both of them work at Acme Corp. It's an online pet store that has been seeing very explosive growth over the last 10 years. And they are now managing about 50,000 orders every day. So things are up and to the right. However, the economic situation has changed. And there has been increased pressure on Acme to optimize the cost structure of the business. So Alice reached out to Bob. Bob we need to make sure that our total cost of ownership of our infrastructure makes sense. Can you take a look at Atlas and make sure that our spend checks out? Bob realized this is his time to shine. So the good news is Bob is already using MongoDB Atlas, which is, as many of you may know, the globally distributed, secure, and highly available data platform. Both Bob and Alice love Atlas. They love the fact that it's fully managed, that it lets them focus on improving their customer experience and leaving the operations to Atlas. So what is key to Acme Corp is being able to optimize costs, but without actually compromising on ops and without having to manage the infrastructure. So they want to make sure that they can still serve their customers very well and reduce their cost of infrastructure. Bob has already saved the day in the past by choosing Atlas. And now he has an opportunity to once again make his mark. Bob devises a flawless plan for cost optimization in three easy steps. Number one, analyzing spend, making sure that there is a baseline to work with, that he has a good understanding of the different components of Atlas. Number two, optimizing the workload. Uh, making sure that the workloads take full advantage of the already provisioned resources. And number three, optimizing cluster cost. So let's see how Bob tackles each of these one by one. Bob goes into the Atlas Cost Explorer in the Atlas UI by navigating to the org settings and exploring the cost breakdown. He finds out two patterns. First of all, that his production clusters are about 10 times more expensive than his dev and QA clusters. And he thinks that's probably on the higher end. So he knows that down. And secondly, he notices here that the storage contributes about $10,000 into his spend every month. So he thinks this is probably where there is opportunity for further improvement. So now that Bob has established the baseline, he goes on to optimize the workload. So the first step is Bob goes in and checks out the performance advisor by navigating um, into the Atlas UI for every cluster. He finds out that there are three indexes missing for one of his key production clusters, and that the schema is not quite optimal, that he needs to perform too many lookup queries between different collections. Yep, these sound like pretty, like fairly easy enough improvements that he can make straight away. So Bob goes and uh, 
applies the changes per the perf advisor's suggestions. And in general, he learns three essential index management components. And the first one is that uh, it's important to create indexes for frequently used queries. And of course, it's always a trade-off, right? Because uh, creating more indexes means slower writes. So he creates only the ones that are truly necessary. Then, once those indexes are there, he makes sure that they cover all the really frequently used queries and all, all their um, variants, uh, such as uh, different projections or um, different collections. And then thirdly, he finds out that um, one of his analysts at the company have been, has been running a number of ETL jobs on the cluster. And that has actually resulted in pretty poor performance and them having to scale up the cluster. So, so uh, he realizes that because of those queries are aggregation framework queries, they're pretty complicated, very difficult to index. So he doesn't create an index for them, puts that aside, and comes back to that in the next step. And then lastly, Bob looks at uh, query result filtering. So the good news is Bob has a UX research team at his disposal. And uh, they find out something very interesting. Acme has been showing customers their past orders, a very important feature for an online store. And to populate that list, Bob has just been using a very simple query, which is seen as the first query there, just looking up the user ID and showing up all the orders. But uh, what the UX research team has found out is most customers don't actually care about all the details of the order, orders and don't want to see hundreds of orders uh, from, from the past five years. So at first, Bob applies a simple projection to the query, which returns the item name, the toll for that order, and the order date, which is in line with what the UX research team has found is the most important. And then, lastly, applies a limit to the query per the um, suggestions that customers really mostly care about the last in, query, uh, last in orders. And this has resulted in a 25% drop in the data transfer between the driver and Atlas. So a pretty significant saving right out of the bat. So Bob has taken a look at the workloads, optimized them very thoroughly, and now he's ready to move on to the third phase, which is optimizing cluster cost. And Bob is very proficient. He knows that cluster costs is really three separate components. It's compute, it's storage, and it's networking. So he already has a hunch that it's storage that's the biggest contributor. But he decides to go one by one and take a look. So first of all, Bob sees a potential to shave, about, shave off about 10% of cost by just better optimizing compute. And he takes a look at a number of tools at his disposal that are available in Atlas. The first and foremost, compute and cluster tier autoscaling, a crucial feature that allows Bob to make sure that the workload is always tailored to the, or sorry, that the resources are always tailored to the workload. That they scale up and scale down as the workload changes. Bob also has a premonition of sorts that his dev, QA, and other non-production clusters are really never used on the, on the weekends. Um, and he comes up with a genius, why don't we just pause those clusters on Friday night and unpause them again on Monday morning? So he does just that and saves about 25% on compute costs for those non-production workloads. And lastly, Bob comes back to the analytical queries run by his analytics team that have been utilizing a lot of the resources on his, on his cluster. His uh, production cluster is now an M40. Um, he had to bump it up to an M50 just because of those ETL jobs that run every day. Um, so. In order to isolate those analytics workloads, Bob was able to create a separate node, analytics node, just for the analytics team, an M10 node, 
and gave the analytics team a connection string so that they can use that node exclusively. This allowed for the analytics, node, analytics workload to be fully isolated to that node and for Bob to be able to reduce the operational cluster tier from an M50 down to an M40, which has uh, resulted in about 25% saving as well. So now Bob has covered compute. What about storage? So Bob has been over-provisioning storage on his Azure cluster for a while because it turns out the workload is very IO intensive. He needs a lot of IOPS. And so he had to bump up the storage all the way to about two terabytes. He's only using about 100 gigabytes. And that obviously is suboptimal. So the good news is Atlas just launched an ability for the Azure storage to be, uh, Azure IOPS to be independently scaled off the storage, which allows him to increase the performance of the storage without increasing the storage itself, which, uh, is, which brings him significant cost savings for one of his key clusters. Another key cluster, Galactus, is at about four terabytes right now. And uh, in the past, this meant they need to shard. Well, the good news is they no longer need to shard. They can just, Bob can just turn on extended storage in the project settings and the storage for his cluster for up to 14 terabytes for his replica set. And that allows him to, number one, delay sharding for a long time, and number two, retain his, comp his uh, compute costs for a long time, just slightly increasing storage costs. And then lastly, Bob has been performing a very significant migration of his QA environment, which resulted in a lot of deleted documents. Now, to reduce that storage size, Bob does two simple steps. Number one, reaches out to Atlas support to run compaction on the cluster. And number two, reduces the storage size for that cluster from about one terabyte to about 25 gigabytes, which obviously means savings galore. So in these three easy steps, he's able to shave off about 35% of storage costs altogether. And then, lastly, as a cherry on top, Bob looks into networking. So first of all, something that Bob has only found out recently is that by turning on storage, sorry, network compression, Bob is able to, at a slightly increased compute utilization, reduce his network egress cost between the driver and Atlas by up to 50%, which is huge. That's hundreds of dollars a month for a large workload. Acme also recently acquired a small business that runs globally, sells uh, very sophisticated pet products. That multi-region cluster that uh, bucks this uh, now acquired business runs across three geographies, the US, Europe, and APAC. Bob has the foresight that it's best to serve customers in each geography with the node that's closest to them. By making a small tweak to his connection string, Bob is able to, number one, reduce latency significantly by always hitting the closest secondary, and secondly, reduce the cross-region network egress costs by 85%. And then lastly, Bob takes a final look at Galactus. He realizes Galactus has been racking up inter-AZ data transfer costs. By making a small tweak in the replica set configuration in the driver, he's able to reduce the inter-AZ data transfer cost by about 60% by directly targeting the node, the, the Atlas node, that's in the same AZ as his up tier. So overall, Bob has made a number of improvements, and he's really proud of himself. He makes all these changes, and a month later, shares the great news with Alice. Overall, 
Valve has been able to save about 20% of the operational cost of Atlas. And more importantly, he was able to do this without compromising the internal SLOs of his business, without compromising on the UX of his customers, and without having to handle any more ops. It's all handled by Atlas. For his incredible service, Atlas, Atlas gets recognized by the management, and Bob gets promoted. He saved the day once again. So what are the lessons learned from this story? There are three steps to optimizing cost. Analyzing spend, establishing the baseline, optimizing workload, making sure that the workload takes full advantage of the resources it has at its disposal, and number three, optimizing cluster cost. And there is great news for everyone here. There are more cluster cost optimization options coming soon in Atlas in the next few months. So if you want to learn how you can optimize cluster cost, I encourage you to visit the link shown right on the screen in the QR code. And if you'd like extra guidance with optimizing cluster cost, our incredible professional services team is here to help. I can connect, uh, connect you with them on after, uh, afterwards uh, next to the stage. So that's it. Thank you for your time. And I'm happy to take questions on the side.